Okay, news coming out of the U.S. Alexander, your quick take on the sudden, a little too late in my opinion, but the sudden interest again, not sudden, but now there's been a renewed interest, a rekindled interest in going after Hillary Clinton and going after the Clinton Foundation. Today we got news breaking that they, are, they may be calling, they want Comey to testify again. Um, this seems To me, this seems like a bad nightmare all over again. They had their chance, the Republicans, um, Nunez, Gaudi, we've done many videos on this. and We've explained that Nunez and Gaudi, these guys, you know, they went after the, the, the Clintons hard. They went after the Democrat Party, Fusion GPS, Christopher Steele. They uncovered a lot of stuff. You detail it pretty accurately what they uncovered. But we also ma- ma- mentioned in our videos that it was basically the Republican Party, the, the Republican Guard, that for some reason didn't want to follow up on everything that Nunez had uncovered. And now that the Republicans are on their way out in the House in about six weeks' time, it seems that they've they've rekindled this interest in, in digging up, you know, the, the corruption of the Clinton Foundation, going after Comey and seeing, you know, his testimonies and if he lied and what he said, going after Christopher Steele and the FBI and the FISA and all this all this stuff all over again. Sorry guys, it's infuriating to see the Republicans now, six weeks before they leave the House finally pressing the Democrats and the Clintons and the Comeys and the McCabes and and, and and the Halpers and all these guys. Alexander, what's your quick take on this? Well, I agree with every single point you've made. And may I say, I mean, ever since we started our, our, our programs, um, Alex, uh, we've been saying it all the time. The, the um, uh, Republicans always have the clock ticking against them um, with the uh, um, congressional midterms um, in November, this November. They left it all far too late, which uh, uh, they didn't give themselves the time and the space to actually complete these investigations. Um, they should have run with these investigations from the start of this thing, uh, uh, this Russiagate thing back in January 2017, shortly after Donald Trump was elected, because already bits and pieces of information were, come, were dribbling out then. The only person who seemed to get at that point a sense that something was badly wrong was Nunes. He didn't get the full support from the Republicans in the House and in the House Intelligence Committee that he uh, deserved. Indeed, at one point, he was actually suspended from his chairmanship of the House Intelligence Committee. Precious months were lost. Even in October of last year, of October 2017, when it finally became clear that the Steele dossier was a load of uh, uh, nonsense um, um, and had been completely unverified, even at that point, the Republicans in the Congress didn't really get their act together. They wasted two years... And now it's far too late. I mean, in six weeks, it is impossible that the House Intelligence Committee can get all this together. I mean, Comey's not going to uh, answer this subpoena. He's going to do everything he possibly can to play for time until the Democrats take over in six six weeks' time, at which, pay, at which point the Democrats will let the subpoena lapse and Comey will be scot-free. The only chance that this can be taken over now, uh, taken forward now, is if um, either Donald Trump and the people he's trying to put in charge of the Justice Department, people like Whitaker or whoever replaces him, finally get round to appointing special counsel to look into this, or if the Republicans in the Senate, who have been dragging their heels on this affair um, up to now, finally get some fire in their bellies and decide to take this investigation forward. But I have to say, the outlook doesn't look good. I mean, they were they were dicking around for two years, the the mm. House Republicans, except for Nunez, Matt Gates, and Gowdy. I think there were maybe three, three, four guys that I think you're yeah. correct. They were on to it. But Alexander, we had all the pieces in October 2017. Even in 2016, we knew about the Steele dossier. We yeah. knew... We knew about Fusion GPS. They called in Glenn Sipson. They, they, all this stuff that we went through, the testimonies of Strzok and Lisa Page and McCabe, is it all for nothing? Well, 
we did a program a little while ago in which we I said that you know the appointment of Whitaker perhaps gives one a peak a brief flurry of hope. And I still have that hope. I still say, I mean, perhaps not Whittaker himself, but um, someone like Whittaker, someone who replaces him, might be prepared to have a look at this thing properly by appointing a special counsel, possibly when after Mueller uh, um, um, completes his report, which is expected to clear Donald Trump of collusion. And then we can move forward with, the, with this thing. But um, realistically, um, um, <laughs> You're absolutely right. The Republicans dickered with this thing. Um, I get the impression that they uh, have great reverence for the U.S. intelligence community. They have great hostility to Russia, at least as great as that of the Democrats. And, of course, at the time when Donald Trump first became president in January 2017, the Republican leadership in Congress, both in the Senate and in the House, was basically hostile to him. They didn't like him. It, it has taken a very long time for the Republicans in Congress finally to unite behind him. And as a result, they you know, precious time has been lost. And you're absolutely right. I mean, we could see this two years ago. We could see what the reality was. I mean, um, you remember the article I put up about Hillary Clinton planting a bomb underneath the U.S., uh, the U.S. Republic, the U.S. Constitution and democracy. I wrote that before the presidential election of November uh, to, uh, 2016. Um, even then, even as far back as then, it was clear that there were problems. And if you go back even further it was clear that there were problems with the Clinton Foundation. It was clear that there were problems with Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server and the way that investigation was conducted or not conducted. Not conducted. It was ob not conducted. It was obvious that there were problems with the, that extraordinary meeting between B Bill Clinton and Loretta Lynch when he clambered onto her business jet and basically sort of had this meeting with her, which was hopelessly improper. There were all sorts of things wrong, and yet people did nothing, and it's now far too late, um, realistically, for the House Republicans to take this thing forward. And which no one talks about that tarmac meeting at all anymore. I mean, it's not even mentioned. Well, I, indeed, even though, I mean, I find that one of the most sinister things uh, of all. And I, can I just repeat again? A point I made about it, I think, in one of our earlier programs, even if Bill Clinton said nothing to Loretta Lynch on that during that meeting, which, by the way, I don't I don't believe. But even if he actually said nothing to her, the very fact that he came to see her in that way and confronted her directly in that way was a extraordinary demonstration of his power over her and of the links that he had with the Obama administration. It's as if Al Capone had turned up uh, the police precinct and spoke with uh, Elliot Ness at the time when Elliot Ness was trying to investigate him. I mean, it was an extraordinary thing to happen. And the entire U.S. media, the entire uh, uh, Democratic and Republican parties did nothing about it. And um, I think you're absolutely right. It was something that is now forgotten, and it should not be, because it was a terrible thing. Yeah, I mean... It my comments on this, Alexander, and where it all went wrong, I see a couple of things. I see, number one, Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, was always working against Trump. Yeah. He never liked him. I don't think he wanted to see any investigation going into Hillary or, or anyone in the Democrat camp. I don't think he wanted Trump as president. I think he would have preferred Hillary Clinton as president, if you want my opinion on Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan's on his way out. He's retiring. He's going to get some consulting job. He's gone. McCain. McCain was sabotaging Trump every single step of the way, even to health care. McCain sabotaged Trump's initiative on health care. And McCain was, in my opinion, the de facto president, the representative of the deep state, the president of the deep state in Congress. That's how I saw McCain. And now McCain is gone. So that's cleared a little bit of, of, of road for Trump or the House to go after after Clinton. And then I also want your opinion on this with Sessions. 
No matter your opinion on Sessions, I think he's not a lawyer and he's not a prosecutor. And to me, in the, in the DOJ, you need someone who understands how to prosecute a case to go after the Clinton Foundation, money laundering, uh, Strzok, Page, someone who really gets the nuts and bolts as to how to attack the, this type well, of corruption. So, I mean, I think those three dynamics, now that they've been removed, but it's too late now, it seems. I mean, mm. what, what's your take on, on, on what I right. just expressed? Right. Well, first of all, I agree with your characterization of all three, uh, about all the things you said about Ryan, all the things you said about uh, um, uh, McCain. Certainly McCain was very hostile to Trump. Certainly I always got the impression Ryan didn't like uh, uh, Trump either. And we must remember it was Ryan, Paul Ryan, who suspended Nunes from the chairmanship of his committee. I mean, at a crucial moment. I mean, as I say, months were lost. I mean, half a year was lost, and that half a year we're paying for. And um, as for Jeff Sessions, I, I, as I understand it, he does have some kind of legal background, but certainly he never had his heart in this thing. And uh, Donald Trump is absolutely right. Uh, um, Jeff Sessions should have told him in advance of accepting the post of Attorney General that he had a con- that he felt that he had a conflict of interest and should recuse himself. And if Jeff Sessions had a conflict of interest, what a much bigger conflict of interest does Rod Rosenstein have, who was allowed to run the investigation by Jeff Sessions for so long? So, I mean, Jeff Sessions, I think has played a very big role in this debacle. Now, as you rightly say, um, we now have a chance to clear the decks. Ryan is gone. McCain is dead. Sessions is going. Um, um, We've got, well, Sessions is also gone. Um, All these people have gone. It really depends at the end of the day on who finally takes charge of the Justice Department and how strong-willed they are to ride out the opposition that there's bound to be from the Democrats in the House and to try and push forward for a proper investigation. There are people within the Justice Department and the FBI, like the Inspector General Horowitz, who come across as decent people who are concerned about what happened. It needs somebody with the strength of mind and the strength of purpose and the integrity to give people like Horowitz the uh, a, a clear run to get to the bottom of this thing. But whether that will happen, I don't know. And Donald Trump himself has not always been very strong about this. Yeah, crimes were committed and you need someone at the Justice Department who is ready to, to uncover those crimes. Yeah. And we have a very good idea. I mean, we've done many videos on this, and we're not the only ones. You've got people like Sarah Carter and John Solomon who have much better insight on this, you know, insider information. But we know the pieces and how they connect. And there were definite crimes committed on a variety of different channels. Yes. You know, I mean... Uh Absolutely. And I, I, I would I would add to that group that you've mentioned, Andrew McCarthy, who, of course, is a former federal prosecutor, uh, just as you said, and who has a very, very clear understanding of the uh, um, criminal procedure and uh, of the kind of way that investigations of this kind should be conducted. If anyone wants to understand the legalities of this thing, um, his um, articles are absolutely indispensable. But, um, you know, we are not the only people to to, uh, see this thing. And as you rightly say, all the pieces are there. What it needs is someone to put the jigsaw together, to go around, and ask proper questions of people like Comey, of people like Loretta Lynch, of people like Hillary Clinton, of people like Peter Strzok, of people like Lisa Page, of all of them. And, uh, and of course, Brennan, the head of the CIA, yeah. and Clapper, the Clapper. dead Clapper. And we also need to get uh, uh, um, the complete release of all the Carter Page Pfizer warrants, which uh, Donald Trump said he would do, but he didn't do. And now we have an article, a very interesting article, which I sent to you earlier today from the Daily Telegraph, which confirms our suspicions that it was uh, British pressure 
that prevented or rather that persuaded Trump to back off. A huge mistake, in my opinion. Um, anyway, we need someone to put all this together. Now, uh, Nunes, and uh, uh, with the help of people like Gaudi, uh, was working towards that. But he always had the problem that, as I said, he was chairing a committee in which the Democrats were also present. And, of course, the House Intelligence Committee is an oversight agency. It is not an investigative agency. Um, the, the only chance, the realistic chance of taking this thing forward is if somebody is appointed by the Justice Department, by the new Attorney General, be it Whitaker, whoever else it is, to actually investigate this thing properly. And if he does, if that person does, um, well, we could see, we could start to get to the bottom of this because all of these people are now out in the open. I mean, Stephen Halpern, I don't believe that Joseph Mifsud has vanished, Christopher Steele, all this extraordinary gallery of people really need to have proper questions asked of them. Yeah, I, I really want some transparency on this two, two three-year-long story I think a lot of people in all around the world, and especially in America, deserve some transparency and some answers as to what happened uh, Absolutely. With, with this hoax, which I still uh, think it's a hoax. You're, you're, you're right to call it a hoax. And if I, I come back to that article I wrote, I think it was in October or November 2016, about the bomb which was planted under American democracy. Um, if you care about the Constitution and democracy of the United States, you want to know how it came to happen that in 2016, what frankly looks like a conspiracy to prevent Donald Trump from becoming president of the United States was put together and how it worked and who was involved in it and why they did what they did. And I think that is something where we not only need transparency, we need honesty. We need to be sure that elections in the United States are conducted properly. So instead of having all this insanity about Donald Trump being some sort of, you know, Russian agent, what was they, what, what did they call it, the Siberian candidate, yeah. all that. Tr troll farms in St. Petersburg, <laughs> indicting 12... <laughs> 12 internet meme guys. <laughs> well, exactly. All, the, all that nonsense. We need to know what was really going on uh, and not fall for this cover story. And also, I mean, if I may say so, I mean, it may be controversial here. What was going on in the New York Times and the Washington Post and CNN and all these places that were churning out this material and uh, um, the way in which, as I said, um, uh, Michael Flynn's career was destroyed. And we're now hearing what people like, uh, someone like George Papadopoulos was saying about the way he was tricked into a perjury trap so that he could be forced into uh, a, a com complicity with an investigation, even though he at all times felt that he'd been actually set up. And that is such a serious thing. And, I mean, we, we should know about it. We should know the whole truth. And American people should be pressuring their governments to know the whole truth. And, of course, a lot of them are, but not enough so far, or so it seems to me. Yeah, and I think the main point so that we wrap this up is that the Democrats, when they do take over the House, they whatever people may think that Trump may get along with Pelosi or they may find some common ground, I'll, I'll put all the money I have in the world on it. The Democrats are going to come hard at Trump. They're going to come hard at him. They're going to open up, God knows, a thousand investigations against him, his family, his grandkids, his grandkids' grandkids. They're going to try to uncover every single turnover, every single stone to try and disrupt Trump's presidency. So he better, he better have something to fire back at them. 
I absolutely agree. And can I make a, can I make my own observation about this? If the Republicans had conducted this investigation properly, starting from uh, January, well, March 2017 was perhaps the moment when, as I said, all the pieces really became visibly in place for a proper investigation to be conducted. And it was in March 2017, let's remember, that Nunes lost his chairmanship. March or April 2017, when Mar uh, Nunes lost his chairmanship of the committee. If, they, if they'd if they investigated this thing properly and we'd had a proper investigation with proper charges brought against the people who were implicated in the real conspiracy and the real scandal of the 2016 election, the midterms, the, the congressional elections in the midterms would have been different. Just as the Republicans increased their majority in the Senate, so they would have increased their majority in the House. It is because they failed to see the investigation through that they lost the House. And you are absolutely right. Having now gained control of the, of the House, the Democrats are not going to let go. They're going to go for Trump with everything they have. And we're going to see two years of ferocious battles. If Donald Trump and the Republicans in Congress, in the Senate, really want to parry this thing, to, to fight back, they have got to get this investigation, the real investigation, finally and properly underway. Absolutely. Alexander McCurse, thank you for your quick take on the recent revelations that we will be having testimony from Comey or maybe testimony from Kobe, maybe an investigation into the Clinton Foundation. We have six weeks left. Let's see what they uncover. Exactly. Alexander McCurse, editor-in-chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, buy a t-shirt, go to the Durant shop. In the description box, you'll find links to our PayPal and Patreon page. Donate to the Durant. It helps us create videos like this for you. Alexander McCurse, editor-in-chief of the Durant. Thank you. Until next time, take care.